Good morning, folks. It's Sunday morning, and we've got about five minutes before our service starts. So for those five minutes, Eileen is going to play us some music just as we gather together. So enjoy this.
Thank you, Alan, for that. I'm just going to move the camera, folks, so bear with me a wee second while we reposition. Good morning, everybody. Lovely to have everybody join with us this morning as we come to worship God here from Strain Presbyterian. Uh, you've already seen Eileen playing the piano this morning, and Eileen's going to play again for us a little bit later on. And uh, I just ask that, just say thank you to everyone who is uh, taking part this morning. I'm not going to spoil any surprises by telling you who all's here. You'll see that as we go along. But um, thank you to everyone who's doing that. And, and as this is happening, I'm just writing down another birthday blessing. It's great. We've got a bigger screen at the minute, so I can now actually see some of the messages which are coming through a lot easier. Um, so, yeah, welcome as we come to worship God this morning. Uh, just let me give you one little verse, a couple of verses, just that I was thinking about this morning, just as we'd be coming down here. This is taken from Matthew chapter 21. Uh, it's a couple of verses, a verse that refers to what the people said as Jesus gathered in, as Jesus came into Jerusalem. Said, he said, first of all, tell the people, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's coat. And then as Jesus came in, the people said this in response. Praise God for the son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in the highest heavens. You know, what we're doing this morning is all about praising and worshipping God. And I do pray that this morning, as we do that together, that we would know God's peace and blessing together. So folks, birthday blessings. This is, this is the fun part of the morning. Um, I've had a couple of messages uh, during the week, and then I've said one more this morning. So if I start it sort of roughly in um, date order. So Wednesday past, we had somebody who had a birthday. Betty Dempster, it was your birthday. So happy birthday for them. Um, yesterday, we had another birthday, which was Winifred McConkie. So, Winifred, again, happy birthday for them. And today, we have a birthday. Um, Robert Little, you were born this day a number of years ago. I'll not let any secrets out of the bag. But it's great um, to be able to say happy birthday to you today as well. And then one of our congregation this week on Thursday becomes a teenager. And that's Tom Bell. So, happy birthday, Tom, for Thursday, whenever you'll hit 13. Let's pause, let's give thanks to God this morning. Lord, thank you for being able to do this, being able to have some fun, um, I, I, something that brings us together as a family, just as we come to worship you this morning. Lord, thinking about birthdays, it's so good to be able to say thank you. Uh, thank you for your, your blessing upon families and ask that that blessing will continue. So Lord, we do remember uh, Betty and Tom and Winifred and Robert. And just thank you for them and just ask that you would continue to bless their families this week and in the year that lies ahead. So Lord, thank you, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks folks for that. Um, if I happen to have missed um, any other birthdays, apologies. Hopefully if they come up later on in the messages, I will see them and then I can mention them later on in the week to you as well. Um, I have one announcement just to say. And just let me get the date for it here because I forgot to write the date down. Um, we've had great success in our collection mornings that we have done for Food Bank and for our church envelopes as well. And the Food Banks have really appreciated all that we have done and the collections that we've had. So our next collection is going to be on Thursday the 23rd of July. So that's not this Thursday coming but the following Thursday again from 10 o'clock till 12 noon. Um, so if you would like to come along and support us in that way at all by bringing us down either some foods or cleaning materials or toiletries, again, I'll put up a list on our Facebook page and onto YouTube or onto our website as well, uh, just to remind us about what is most needed at this time. And again, if you'd like to drop off any church envelopes uh, when you're doing that, then you're very welcome to do so. That's the only announcement I have this morning. And all I just want to say this morning is thank you for joining with us this morning. I know it's not just Strain. I know we've also got Bally Black and Cardor Bally Frenis. I know we've got other people as well joining in together as we worship God. It doesn't matter what the name of your church is. It doesn't matter what your denomination is. We are a family and we come to worship God. And it's just so good, even in the middle of lockdown, to be able to continue to do this to meet together, to, to, to enjoy worship 
music together, to be able to, to read God's word together and pray together. So that's what we're about this morning, just as we come into God's presence. So as we do that, let's just pause and let's ask God to be with us. Father, thank you again for this day. Thank you for a glorious day that you have given to us. As we meet together in our homes, um, online, maybe on a beach somewhere, or wherever we may be as we, as we link in, Lord, to simply be with us this morning. Be close to us, we pray, and help us and challenge us today. So, Father, thank you. And continue with us, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Now, boys and girls, we've been doing a series on fruit here in church. And we've done all sorts of different fruits. Um, I wonder if you've ever broken a fruit open and you've looked for the seeds in it. Some fruits have a couple of seeds in it. Some fruits have only one seed in them. Well, the fruit that we're going to talk about this morning, okay, I'll give you a little hint. It's got a green hat on top of it, you might say, and it's red. And it's the one fruit which is completely covered in seeds. Let's see how quick you are. Can anyone tell me what that fruit is? I'm sure anyone's going to be quick off the mark and be able to type it in and say what it is before I reach down here and pick one out of the bag. Are you? It is a strawberry. Can you see that? Now, it might be hard to see in this light. Let's see if I can shade a little bit. But if you look at the outside of a strawberry, yeah, well done, Jack, strawberry. A strawberry is very unique. Now, Strawberries have a different texture to them. They have a different sort of feeling in your mouth when you're eating them. Part of it is because of what is on the outside. They are literally covered in seeds. Now, it's really unusual because no other fruit is like that, where you, you've got the whole surface outside covered in all these seeds. You could say that the sole purpose of a single strawberry is to try and make as many strawberry plants as possible because each of those seeds has the possibility of creating another plant which will produce lots and lots of strawberries with lots and lots of more seeds and they just grow and grow and grow and they multiply. The purpose of a strawberry, it wears its seeds on the outside so it can make more plants. A bit like us as Christians or what we're meant to be as Christians. You see, we're meant to let people know that we follow Jesus and that we belong to God. And that our purpose is to let other people know about God, about how much he loves them, how much he cares for them, everything that he has done for them. Jesus tells us that in a little passage in Matthew chapter 5. Let me read you a couple of verses. Matthew 5, 13 to 16. You are the salt of the earth. This is Jesus talking to the people. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? You're no longer good for anything except to be thrown out, trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp, put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. And it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. God, Jesus wants us to tell everyone around us that God loves them, that God cares for them, that God is a great and a wonderful God. That's what he wants us to do. A strawberry has a, has a purpose. All those seeds, it wears them on the outside so everyone knows it's a strawberry. Everyone knows what its job is. Its job is to make as many strawberry plants as possible. God wants us, by everything that we do, to let people know that he loves them and cares for them. Why? So that they can come to know him and love him the way we do. God is a great and a wonderful God. He wants to be with us every minute of every day and help us, boys and girls. We just need to trust him. Let's pray about that this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you that at any age we can trust you. We can love you just like you love us. Father, that's what you call us to do. This to love you and to show that love to others so that you can transform their lives as well. 
Father, help us to be strawberries in our Christian life. Help us to wear our, our faith on the outside so people can see it, so that every action speaks about you. Heavenly Father, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Boys and girls, I'll put up the wee sheet later on um, this morning about strawberries so that parents, grandparents can remind you of that story during the week. And I'll set you a challenge. See if you can think about all the different fruits that we have talked about so far. Um, if you want to if, if you want to help me hand with that, go back on Facebook or on YouTube and you'll see all the videos and you can link any and, and you can pick all the different ones out. And see if anyone can guess which fruit we're going to talk about next week. If you think you might know what it is, just get a parent to send me a little message and we shall see if anyone can get it right. But we'll do another fruit again next week. So boys and girls, thank you for listening so well. At this point, we're going to pause together and we're going to pray. And Fiona's going to come and lead us in prayer. Then he's going to move the camera. In our prayers this morning, our first prayer is from the Church of Scotland's magazine, Life and Work. Let us pray. Eternal God, in this strangest of years, as we have watched winter bloom to spring, unfold to summer from behind our windows and doors, speak to us, God of promise and hope that in your shaping hands you hold all time, the quick and the slow, the full and the empty. Present God, in this strangest of years, as we have heard the voices of loved ones from afar and communicated with many, but not face to face, speak to us, God, of promise and hope, that with your gentlest, calmest voice, we may find your reassurance that in good time we will meet again with those from whom we have been separate. Understanding God in this strangest of years, as we have seen our plans crumble or go on hold and we have found it hard to focus and concentrate and be resilient in our thinking, Untangle our minds that we might piece together steadily our way ahead. One step, one day, one hour, one moment. Beside our thoughtful God whose paths already lie beneath our feet, prepared to lead us on. Loving God in this strangest of years, take us by your hand and with your smile, Forgive, encourage, and set free each child of yours, each church, community, and land, that healed by grace, emboldened by your love, we may, with daring faith, resolve our hearts to face the future, confident that our future, now as always, invites our discovery and our trust in you. And now, Lord, we pray for the people and organisations supported by our mission giving. We pray for our PCI global mission workers, mindful that they are ministering to others in a time of global pandemic so far away from home. We think this morning in particular of Diane Kusick in Zambia. We pray, Lord, that the health professionals Diane works alongside will be able to contain the virus as much as possible, working in high density areas in Lusaka. We know that social distancing is difficult when many collect water from just one borehole or tap. We know that many in Zambia worry about income and food. There are few ventilators and a lack of other hospital equipment. Lord, we pray that you will continue to stay close to Diane and that she will know your presence day by day. And now, Lord, we give thanks and pray for our congregations. Thank you, Lord, for the connection between Strain, Valley Black, Carador and Valley Freemus churches. May we be united in Christ. 
We pray for the process to call a new minister to Caradore and Ballyblack, that this process might resume and that your hand will guide all involved. And we pray for all in our congregations who have experienced loss in recent months, face difficult illness or diagnosis, who are lonely and anxious, who are worried about jobs and money, who have juggled homeschooling and family life. Lord, you know each one of us and our needs. Be with us, strengthen us, and go before us, we pray. And may all that we do, Lord, be to your glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, Fiona, for leading us this morning in prayer. And Eileen's going to play for us again now. What a friend we have in Jesus. Thank you, Eileen. I'm going to bring the camera across again here. And Kirsty is going to read to us from God's Word this morning. Good morning, everybody. Our reading this morning is found in the book of John, chapter 10, verses 1 to 10. So, the good shepherd and his sheep. I tell you the truth, anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The, gate over, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep recognises his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. Those who heard Jesus use this illustration didn't understand what he meant, so he explained it to them. I tell you the truth, I am the gate for all the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and find good pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Kirsty. Let's let me move this again. I have to move this camera every time because of our social distancing regulations at the moment. I wonder if you enjoy the object lessons that the kids have been hearing every Sunday morning using different objects of fruit. 
does it does it help you at all? Does it help you to see the picture? And does it help you to remember what some of the things that we've talked about are? Um, that's the whole point of it. That's what Jesus does every time he speaks, whenever he's talking about parables. He uses object lessons. He uses something which the people can relate to from everyday life, and he builds a story around it. Today, he uses um, an example taken from the farming community. Now, this is one which we may, maybe most of us would struggle to try and um, get or to grasp, or one that we may have trouble identifying with, because most of us, let's face it, are not farmers. Most of us have never looked after sheep. Um, most of us probably don't want to look after sheep. Maybe we see it as too hard of work. But Jesus uses an example to talk to them. This is part of the I Am series. And that's what we're going to be doing right until the first Sunday in the August is the I Ams. And this one today, you can say it is I Am the Gate or I Am the Door, depending on which translation you use. Jesus hints about several others in this which he comes to. But I just want to draw your attention, hopefully, to something maybe a little bit different in this passage this morning. Right in the very first verse, Jesus says, truly, truly, I tell you Pharisees, or very truly, I tell you Pharisees. Jesus points the finger very firmly at who he's talking to. He does that quite deliberately. The Pharisees are there, but so are all the other people. People, most of them who are not Pharisees, who are listening to what Jesus is saying. And who are listening intently. They want to hear what he has to say. And Jesus talks about how the person who, um, who does not enter by the gates, but who climbs over the wall, how that person is a thief and a robber. And Jesus goes on to say that the one who enters by the gate is the true shepherd. And he talks about how the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, the shepherd. Jesus is talking about his father and himself. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. God opens the way. And Jesus is that shepherd. But we're not going to get ahead of ourselves because that's going to be our next I am. But I want you to try and think about this. This is a bit that, anytime I've heard this passage preached on, I've never thought about this. But a bit that struck me and I thought, this is something that we need to, to think about. In verse 4, it talks about the shepherd. It says, when he was brought out, um, all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away because they don't recognize the stranger's voice. The sheep in that passage have a role to play. The sheep have to listen for the voice of their shepherd. They have to recognize the voice of their shepherd, trust the voice of their shepherd and follow him. And if somebody comes in who is not their shepherd, who is a stranger or a thief, as Jesus puts it, then they are to run away from them. Have you ever thought of that? Have you ever thought in all this passage that Jesus talks about, when he talks about being the gates, about being a good shepherd, and different elements will come to, have you ever thought about what the role of the sheep is? Now, just to make it blatantly obvious, we are the sheep. Okay, so people on earth are the sheep. And it tells us that we have to listen to the voice of the shepherd, trust the shepherd, but don't trust the thief. Now think about that for a minute. In church, in worship, in studying God's words, you have a responsibility. You just don't listen to the person who's at the front speaking. You don't take everything they say as being true or being right. You have to listen for yourself and you have to recognize if it's true. Have you ever thought about that? Now, we do that whenever we're doing Bible studies in church. Because whenever we do Bible studies in church, we learn together. That's, that's what I love about doing Bible studies. We come and we sit and we discuss and we all learn together. And we all share ideas and we talk about ideas and we talk about different ways that maybe a passage could be translated or interpreted. And we start to examine what is right and what's not right. 
And that's what Jesus is saying in this. He's saying that people are going to come along and talk to you, preach to you, try to tell you what to do, but they're not right. In fact, they are a thief and a robber. And you shouldn't just blindly follow them, the way people talk about sheep blindly following. You should actually run away. Now, we do have a few shepherds in our congregation um, here in Strain. And I'm sure that those folks who have sheep would tell you that the sheep do get to know you. It's like a lot of other animals. You might call them silly at times, uh, and they get themselves into all sorts of bother. But there is intelligence in there. They do get to know who is their shepherd or who is the one who cares for them, who is the one who looks after them, who is the one that feeds them. Not the one who comes along to steal and to harm them, but the one who truly cares for them. They get to know who that person is and they trust them so that whenever you speak, they respond and they come to you. Um, I recently went to visit somebody um, before lockdown who kept animals. And normally whenever the, he went there um, to the edge of the field and called the animals, the animals come up to him. But because I was standing beside him, they, the animals wouldn't come up the field. They were wary of me. They didn't know me. They didn't trust me. And I would have had to spend time with them before they would have realised that they could trust me um, before they would come up to me. That's the example that's being shown here in this passage. When he brought, has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will never follow the stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they don't recognise a stranger's voice. Jesus was using this to get at the Pharisees. He was using this to tell the Pharisees that they were not teaching the people correctly. That they were leading them down a false road. And Jesus would go on to tell them about the true shepherd. And we're going to come to that next week. But before we come to that, we need to realise what our responsibility is. That we don't blindly follow. But that we have to, to, to seek out for ourselves as well. And test and see. And see if that person is right. That means we read our Bible it means we just don't come along to church on a Sunday or sit and watch church on a Sunday and we listen to somebody reading the, pa the, the, the Bible passage and we listen to what somebody says about it and we go away and, and okay, that's, that's fine. It means we don't do that. It means we go back to it again. We read it for ourselves again and we think, now, do I agree with that? Do I think that's right? Or, or maybe I agree with most of it, but maybe I don't agree with some of it. And, and you examine God's word for yourself. And you get to hear what God is saying straight to you. You are seeking God. All of us are called to do that. All of us are called to seek God. It's not something which is passive. It's something which is active. That means it's not something that you just sit back and you let it happen. It's something that you have to go out and actually do for yourself. You actually have to read God's word. You actually have to try and understand it. You have to ask questions of it. And then if you've got questions which you don't understand or questions that you can't answer, then you go looking for those answers. For some people, it's talking to people like me or somebody else who maybe can sit down and, and go through the Bible passage with you. For others, it's picking up a book uh, and reading it and seeing what it says. Maybe not always accepting what the book says, but through what you're reading, um, God starts in your head a thought process. And God, through his Holy Spirit, opens up his word to you. And you understand it. But that is something that you actively have to do. The sheep in this passage actively ran away from the stranger or the thief because they didn't trust him. So I want to ask the question this morning, who do you listen to? Who do you trust? Do you listen to just anybody who's speaking and you accept what they say and you just go along with it? Or when somebody is speaking about something from God's word, do you turn to God's word yourself? Do you read it for yourself? 
and pray about it for yourself and explore it yourself. And then, fair enough, if, if you agree with what the person has said, you agree with them. But what about if you disagree? Do you pray again about it and ask God to show you what is right and show you what way to go and what to follow? Or do you allow that thief to rob you of that special relationship with God? Because that's what the thief in this passage does. The thief is there to steal the sheep away. The thief is there to rob the sheep of the relationship with their true shepherd. God wants us to know the true shepherd. God wants us to know the true joy of, of following him. The true joy of loving him. Are you going to examine that for yourself? Or are you going to be a silly sheep and just go with a crowd? Examine scripture. Explore it for yourself. Pray about it. And God will speak to you through it. He will draw closer to you. Let's pray about that this morning. Let's pray together. Father, thank you again for your word. It is so full of different passages, so full of different meaning. Lord, there's just so much in it. And yes, Father, we at times struggle to understand your word. But thank you for your Holy Spirit, who sheds light upon your word, helps us to understand it. Lord, help us to be active in following you and not passive. Help us to actively seek you. Help us to examine the things which are said to us, to see what is true and what's not true. And Lord, help us to follow the true path, the path that brings us to you, our one true shepherd. Father, thank you. Thank you for being with us this morning. And as we go now, Lord, we ask that you would part us with your blessing, that in the week that lies ahead, that you would be close to us, near to us, that your hand would be upon us, that you would lead us and guide us. So, Father, we thank you now and always. In Christ's name, amen. Thanks, folks, for joining with us this morning. Um, I, pray that's, I pray that's got your, your brains thinking this morning and that you do go away and that you examine God's word for yourself and see what it's saying. And then if you have any questions, pick up the phone and give me a call. All right, folks, take care. God bless. See you again tomorrow morning if you want to tune in at nine o'clock for our Bible readings. So I'll see you then. Until then, take care. God bless.